Oh, <laughs> got a howl at the moon. Hello, right, okay, welcome to Review Rant Random for Wolf, not the Wolf, Wolf. Now, Wolfman, going all the way back to the early 1900s, I'm gonna say, part of the Universal Monsters series, Wolfman was always dead creepy and stuff like that, ooh, and stuff like that. And the idea of a werewolf has been transitioned to so many different times. As a kid, I remember seeing that werewolf in particular from the Ed Bell's house when I was a kid, just scaring the shit out of us, you know, the idea of the stalk and that. And always like the twist and like the problems of dealing with a wolf. And like, Universal's tried to reboot it a few times, the wolf man with burial hair, I was butchering his name, Anthony Hopkins was in it. That was a more recent attempt at it and you know it gets brought into Van Hels again and there's always a story and all that about werewolves, people like the werewolves, silver bullet werewolves. But in the 90s, especially when I was a kid and especially when you first started going to the movies and pictures, um, you would go, in, like I remember seeing Batman and loving Batman and I remember Batman Returns being shown at Christmas on the pictures, sorry the pictures on the television. So I remember when I went to the pictures and you used to see like the quad posters going in and there was Wolf. You knew who Jack Nicholson was, he's the Joker. You know who Michelle Pfeiffer was, she's Catwoman. Ooh, Wolf. And I remember seeing it and I've always had mixed memories of it, I would say. Um, it became very hard to get a hold of on DVD. I've got, still got it on VHS. Has seen the later day on Blu-ray. I've, sorry, I've left my phone right underneath the camera. <laughs> Boo-boo. Um, it came out on Blu-ray on Indicator label. An indicator always really rock up a good hard price and I just couldn't justify it. And then I recently picked up the soundtrack and I listened to the soundtrack and I fucking love the score. The score's amazing. So when I've revisited that night, I got the score, listened to the score, I was going to watch the movie and I watched it all. And it's a two hour movie and I watched it and I, you know, it starts off with a bit of a marsh, the shining. And then Jack Nicholson's going up the road. And all of a sudden, oh, there's a wolf in the middle of the road, bang up the thing, like the full moon's out, right, okay. And he goes to pick it up and the wolf's like looking at him. Closing and ties, does it fucking Bret Hart, about to roll diesel up for the one, two, three, to get the belt back at, when was that? SummerSlam? So it was a Survivor Series 1995, Poof, out my head, uh, playing possum and it bites into ah, my hand. So he's like, ah, my hand. So he goes back and he's, he's basically goes and sleeps for 12 hours and you get to see inside his, what his job is and he's a uh, book editor. And he's sort of not on the righteous path, his marriage has fallen to bits, but he doesn't realise it. His boss has sort of had enough of him, he's sort of, he's become obsolete in his job, he's not cutthroat enough. And James Spader, again, at that, you know, he was just coming off as a right creep. I just remember James Spader from Stargate. There's been a lot of James Spader, he popped up in there, Wall Street the other night when I was watching it, but I'm sure, what was the film was I seen when he was just walking down the street randomly? But off that topic. So anyway, um... He, he gets called to the big boss's house and he goes to the big boss's house as a big conference and he's basically, he gets the boot really, he gets off the job that no one wants or to take redundancy and not have a job. And you know, he's like, Ugh. and it turns out that James Bitt has just been like stabbing him in the back. He's like, fuck you, fuck you. While this is happening, he's going through a bit of a change. His hearing's coming out, he doesn't understand, he's having anxiety attacks. And he stumbles across the boss's daughter, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, and Michelle Pfeiffer has never looked hotter. Like, I watched Dangerous Minds this year. All right, the young girl, the white girl, Michelle Pfeiffer thing. I think she looks amazing in this, definitely this movie. And there she is, and it'd be a great reveal, just the feet in the background, she gets up, hey, how are you doing? And he's just like, ooh, and just, they play on chemistry, you know. And it's sort of, you know, he goes back and then he gets a bit weird and he sort of starts like creeping out and running through the woods, chasing deer and teeth coming out there and he's trying to deal with that. Then he discovers that James Spader's cheating on his wife with him, so he bites his hand and he's like, and then starts running up the fucking walls. So, in this mental office, he sort of, you know, listens on people's good sense of hearing and um, sort of investigates and, you know, like, tries to find out you know the fear of the wolf and it's taking a real serious tone but like you know like it's fucking ludicrous you were bit by a wolf or whatever and um he sort of gets his life on track you know he he sort of gets um his job back he becomes cutthroat he becomes like 
twisted and you know he's uh, there's some really good shots as well especially when he walks out and he looks out into like the building that's like the publishing house is in it's an amazing location absolutely amazing um and then he's like the next thing you know he's in the he's in the zoo and you uh central park which fucking staring at the bears and stuff like what the fuck's going on and then david swimmer turns up and tries to arrest him <laughs> it's like david swimmer pre-friends i'm like that's ross and he's like, you stole my handcuffs and uh and then the whole thing about driving out, getting with Michelle Pfeiffer, telling his wife to, wife to piss off and all that. But then, surprisingly enough, Jim Spader really turns on the creep. His fucking eyes, he's scratching us, he's got fucking fluffy beards coming out. They never go full wolf. And then all this, like, compliments to, like, the fight in the barn. And, like, this is what I remember about the movie. Although it's a wolf, he's meant to be a wolf, you still got to remember this is fucking Jack Nicholson. And Jack Nicholson, like, dominates decades. Jack Nicholson, I mean, I can look back and remember watching a film called The Pledge and Lincoln. And I've never rewatched it. And I can maybe look at that and go, right, I maybe should rewatch that and might understand a bit better, but whatever. But Jack Nicholson is Jack Nicholson. He's not fucking stupid. He doesn't take paychecks. He delivers every time. And again, this goes at the era where this has so much 90s nostalgia to me. So anyway, I was watching it. And I was like, yeah, they're good there. And maybe he could have got a better stunt double for when he's chasing down the deer, <laughs> running through the woods and, you know, doing his best animal impression and stuff like that. And I see, like, right? I like it. I, I like the dramatization of it. I like the, you know, I like James Spade too. The James Spade is perfectly cast in this. And it's, you know, it's, it's a very serious drama played with the wolf twist. And in the end, you know, the end's just fucking, you know, she's the fuck of the century and all that. And I was just like, all right, that's really funny. And it gets a bit witty and a bit comedy. Fucking carpet, it definitely didn't do a good um, weed stuff in the carpet. But anyway, um, at the end of it, like, I'm going to leave it to the outtakes. Well, then I've already spot the film anyway. If you haven't seen Wolf already, what the fuck? But yeah, he sort of, Jim Spader gets shot, lands in the pool. And then, uh, Jack Nelson just fucks off in the woods and he runs off pulling all his clothes off and then from what we understand he turns into a fucking wolf and then from what we understand Michelle Pfeiffer is now a wolf and they run off in the woods together as wolves and that's the thing that's always left us weird about the review at randoms about the review <laughs> they get weird no the film it's like I think the end's crap. <laughs> like his eyes, you know, he turns on the wolf and he's off in the full moon and I don't know. I don't um, Simply Bowie though. I mean again I've got the soundtrack, I've listened to the score a few times now. Music's meant. But like it's a quirky one. Plus Christopher Plummer obviously plays the father in this as well. I've just recently seen him in Knives Out as well, so I mean, uh, I'm trying to uh, almost get his character confused. <laughs> but he's not dead on the fucking roof or anything. But no, um, um, as I say, I wish I had it on my Blu-ray collection. And indicator, indicator always rocks a good price. I'm not saying, but indicator is weird as well. You'll either get a super special edition with loads of extra features, or you'll get the fuck all stripped back ball bell ball moving edition. But yeah, nothing. This is the film, um, and that's it. You know. See so, ya. Yeah, see you now, takes. Just an outtake, so if you check it out, um, I've got a video coming out. Um, this should be around about the same time. I'm trying to keep stuff really close together at the moment. It's called Five, maybe it's Four, or Four, maybe it's Five, Vinyl Unboxings, and this is the story of where Wolf comes from. Um, oh, bit of a drum cut there to my phone. Camera's fat. No camera's fat, the camera's fucking full. I've talked for too long, for too many different things, for too many different videos. So yeah, thing the night, make sure the camera's uh, completely wiped. 64 gig it runs out thanks for watching enjoy well goodbye for now mm -hmm.